Whoa. Um. Shit. Okay. Um. Uh. I thought you said the two of you were travelers. The teen felt silent for a moment. The teen fell silent for. for and so did Lucario, though the first was more scared to reveal their inner motives to the blonde. You yes, Donna. You yes, but you you should know how bad this is for me anyway, Chris said. Uh, oh, I know how you feel. That much I can say, Joff said, the other two dodging the bullet. Still, my father should be able to find something you can use. He is a renowned scientist. From what the old magazines at the boarding school told me. The otherworldly duo gave Jeff... Je you think I'd have known it. You think I'd have remembered it by this point. You think I'd have remembered it by this point. The otherworldly duo gave Jeff some odd looks at the fact, but they shrugged afterwards. Lucario then heard his younger trainer sigh. Lucario, please be on your guard even more, Chris said. Like this, anybody could kill me with a stick. I take offense to that, Joff said. Who am I kidding? I can probably die the same way too. I don't think someone can really... I mean, yes, I will, Lucario said, forcing a small smile, but his trainer didn't smile back. He was too busy sulking about his misfortune to feel optimistic while also thinking the horrendous chain of events that would follow if he never got back to his older self. His mentality was left intact. That much he could tell. But he felt too small and weak. If his parents were to see him, no amount of explanation would suffice. It hit Chris that what he was going through was truly happening. The fact that he had lived half a year with a large Lucario proved that anything could happen. But after the Aura Pokemon stumbled upon the real world, there wasn't so much normal. There was so much normality in their lives that the thought of about transcending worlds was nearly unheard of. Even more morbid was the proof that Chris had been de-aged. But there wasn't anything even more traumatizing than this. He thought. He was now regretting his poorly chosen life choice. As Jeff brainstormed impossible ways to find a cure, they came across the entrance of another cave, down a few ways away from the brick road. The Pond Cave. And here, and here lies our next stop in the journey, Jeff said. Let's go. Two caves in a row. Two caves in a row, Chris thought. It was about four hours into his journey, and he was already at his second cave. Except this time, Lucario was a giant, and Juff was around his age. The bubble monkey didn't have any purpose to be added to the equation, <laughs> its whole existence being spitting on enemies and chewing bubblegum. <laughs> well, I'm glad he recognises um, the uselessness of the side character, but, you know... Uh, <laughs> that was pretty funny, actually. Pond Cave. Brick Road at least had the decency of having near clean air escaping between the multitudes of rocks. Pond Cave, in comparison, was harsher in, in hindsight. And it reminded Chris that his otherworldly escapades were just starting to get weirder and dangerous. It was more apparent in the odd world that he stepped into. The cave had a damp at. The, uh, the cave had a damp atmosphere among the tall cliffs that had conveniently placed ropes set on top of said cliffs to help travellers pass the humid cave. Surprisingly enough, Chris and Lucario expected bats to inhabit the cave, but there weren't any. Instead of natural bats, the cave was occasionally grazed with the presence of red fungi and slow-moving blobs that didn't have a care in the world until unaware prey would get in their way. My first experience inside a dark cave, Chris thought, and for a moment he thanked Mother Nature for providing en enough illumination to the cave's innards. Otherwise, he would be hand-grabbing Lucario the entire way. With the fact that he was younger, it didn't make things any less disheartening, but he had a super powerful Pokemon to shield him from everything, so it was a big plus that kept him sane for the most part. Sanity was, of course, the last thing on the long list of stuff Nessa's world lacked. That, that maybe explains why I'm losing mine very quickly. Shortly after, near the entrance of the cave, Chris could have sworn that a mushroom cap twitched. The others followed his gaze and saw the mushroom springing into life by taking itself off the ground, sporting a pair of thin legs. Chris and Lucario winced at the animated fungus strutting around at spot. That is definitely not normal, Lucario finally said, his red eyes circling around the running mushroom. Oh, of course it's not, Chris muttered, finding the strutting mushroom kind of adorable than threatening. Touching it was out of the question. It looks stupid. Well, I say, Joff said, let's not get involved with it. 
It may give us the rabies if we want to eat it. Suddenly, the strutting evil mushroom. Wow, that's a, that's a snappy title. Waltzed to their side and stopped in front of Chris. The little kid backed off a bit. But then he remembered he was confronting a two-legged mushroom that didn't pose any threat. Uh-oh, this is stupid. I can surely cut it down with a random stick. Ow! The mushroom bashed his right knee with its cap. Lucario growled and grabbed the mushroom by its cap. Growling, he tore the animated fungus in two and tossed its lifeless halves aside. <laughs> As Juff was greatly discouraging the fact Lucario had beheaded yet another creature. No, he didn't behead that fucker, he tore it in half. Uh, that luckily lacked any blood fluids to force the others into a puking session. The aura Pokemon knelt down to check on his trainer. Are you alright? he asked. Chris rubbed the spot where he was bashed. It's really okay, he trailed off. That was a bit too hard, but it wasn't bad. Thank you for getting rid of it. How is it possible that he was hurt? He got kicked in the leg by a mushroom. Um, how, how, how big was the mushroom? Ign ignoring how he literally beheaded a walking mushroom with all the intention of the world, Juff began. Let's move on, shall we? The group of four walked through the cave to find the other exit on the other side. The bubble monkey proved to be an invaluable ally that helped them climb over the cliffs by throwing ropes down, but he was quickly overshadowed by Lucario's superb jumping skills, making the monkey's usefulness useless. <laughs> it didn't bother the monkey, though, because he was being fed with bubblegum from Jeff. It was all good in his book. After some walking on the high cliffs, uh, they stopped walking when they came across an ominous sight before their eyes. There was some sort of sparkling light blocking the way to another exit that led to a small northern portion of Winters. Frightened by the weird light, Chris backed off and hid behind the growling Lucario. F forget about the two-legged mushroom! What is that?! Chris muttered, the first time in his life to see a weird glittering light that wasn't fake at all. Lucario immediately used his aura. The light emitted a red aura, but behind that red aura was an entity blocking the path to a sacred spot across the exit it guarded. Its aura is serene, Lucario muttered. Yet it's an enemy. It's not attacking us, though. I don't know why. Juff approached the light. It'd be wise if we left it alone. What a weird phenomenon, Juff said, staring up at the glittering light. Ellipsis. There was something odd that called Juff out through his mind as he stood close to the light. You are not allowed to come through here. The light suddenly spoke to them all. Only Ness can absorb the power of this place. Be gone! Most of them yelped at the deep voice, telling them, telling them to stay away from it. Juff back, backed off and fixed his glasses. Uh, uh, all right, Juff said. I don't suppose we really need to pass this particular exit. But what if we need to? This light won't let us through unless we have this Ness person with us. Recalling that Lucario could survey a large stretch of land with his aura, Chris suggested to him to scan the area for another exit. Nodding, the aura Pokemon quickly found an exit to the west of their position. The aura behind the light led to a dead end, except there was a powerful feeling that enshrined the small field of glass. Grass. Fuck. You can't have a field of glass, you stupid bitch. Moreover, Lucario listened to an ethereal sound that resounded several times with the same beat. However, there was no real need for them to go look at it. There's an exit to our left! He said, still remembering the sounds that continued to echo in his head. Oh, that's better, Juff noted, sighing. Let's go to that exit. But as for this light, he looked back at the light, Ness is the other friend Paula mentioned in her call. I should probably mention this to them. Chris took one last glance at the dim, shining light behind their backs. He sighed to himself, and Lucario overheard him. Is something bothering you, Chris? He asked. Um, besides your current condition... Well, my current condition is another thing of the, my growing list of odd stuff I've seen so far, Chris said, noticing that Jeff, Jeff, Jeff wasn't within earshot along the, with a bubble monkey. So far, I've seen gruff goats, friendly lake monsters, those subspace enemies we're facing, and walking mushrooms and now some weird light. He shuddered, rubbing his shoulders. It's so hard to take in all at once, you know. Lucario nodded. It'd feel more natural for me to find other Pokemon, not this, he emphasized. Oh, that's the first, this is our first job as smashers. I'll reread that sentence.